Grandmother's Voice hosted a sharing circle at Country Heritage Park, attended by Indigenous community members and groups from around the region, including Halton Police, libraries, churches, and city representatives. Researcher Mary Medcalf explained the data was gathered with snowball sampling, allowing participants to recommend other Indigenous members for consultation. Uh, one of the things that we recognize, no matter what community we go into, is that there are people who do not come forward. And there are urban Indigenous peoples that are not necessarily self-identifying, but even more important, may not come to a gathering like this. While the full written report won't be released until March, Medcalf outlined initial findings and asked Indigenous participants to prioritize them. She shares the top three. It's the need for an Indigenous-led organization body of some sort and the relationship to uh, land, so a physical place where people can be engaged in their culture uh, and education. So education, uh, how well are our children, um, how well are our Indigenous children, um, seven, looking at seven generations from now, uh, educating um, non-Indigenous members of the community as well as organizations. And we begin to recognize that the way that mainstream organizations do business is not necessarily well aligned with the uh, practicing of Indigenous culture. So we've come across some work uh, that says culture is treatment. If you engage in your culture, that's the support. And those are the, using a colonial term, interventions. But this notion of practicing your culture is very important. And where do you do that? Medcalf says findings in Halton are similar to four other reports she's completed. Little Saskatchewan First Nation member Melissa Summer moved to Halton from Toronto three years ago. She says she's had a hard time finding Indigenous events and groups to belong to. While I was in Toronto, there was many different opportunities to engage with um, groups and organizations, either at a location or virtually. During the event, she shared her dismay that Halton Hills recently cut more than $100,000 from their proposed budget for local Indigenous initiatives. Considering that within Article 74 of engaging municipalities, federal and provincial governments, having them be involved in engaging the community to recognize, commemorate and engage with Indigenous groups and have these pieces done, the fact that this was cut was incredibly gut-wrenching. She wants to see municipalities engage with the urban Indigenous population who actually live in Halton. We all know here in Halton Hills, the closest reserve that we have is Six Nations out in Caledonia, which is almost 60 plus kilometers away. We have a huge group of Indigenous people who live here in the Halton region, in Halton Hills, Burlington, Oakville, Milton, who would love to have their voices heard and be a part of these activities and these incredible organizations and have the skill sets to advocate for these things, but without the funding and recognition, it's incredibly difficult for those voices to be heard and acknowledged. Reporting for Halton News, I'm Nikki Wesley.